Welcome to the latest edition of Millennial Boom with Diane Faith and Stanley Roberts, where almost no subject is off limits. Now, here are your hosts, Boomer Diane Faith and Millennial at Heart, Stanley Roberts. I know I got it wrong. Ah. And there we and go. And live from the Oscars. O S K A R S on ACB. <laughs> Channel ACB. <laughs> Channel ACB. Channel M- no, Channel MBP. <laughs> Mr. Badley Productions. There you go. All right. What's up? What's up, guys? We are here. We, with- yo, yo, yo. What's up? We just went. We just finished walking on our rainbow carpet. Matt B jumped in early. Hey, what's up, Matt B? We don't have a red carpet. We have a, a rainbow carpet, linoleum floor, and a candle. More like a rainbow rug. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of wondering why you use the German version, Oscar. So, because Oscar, I think, is trademarked. I don't know for sure, but yeah. better safe than sorry. I think Oscars is trademarked. I don't know if Oscar is because that's a name. But hi. I know some of you guys are like hardcore watching Doom sweep the Oscars. That's a lot of sand to take over everything. We just wanted to say hi. Hi. Were we here last week? Yes, we were here last week. It was the week before last we were in here. But you're never here. What do you mean? I'll just leave that one there. All right. All right. So what's going on, peeps? What's up, my chat? So if you're just joining us, we are Millennial Boom. I'm Millennial. She's a boomer. Yeah, a boomer that apparently is getting a lot of, getting some allergies right now because I don't know what's happening. I have been sneezing like for the last three days. I never had allergies growing up. And all of a sudden, I just like can't stop sneezing here. And then she blames it on me. Oh, it's got to be because the window's open. So I close no, the window. I didn't oh, blame... it's got to be the air conditioner. So I close the windows and turn, I turn off the air conditioner. Oh, it must be the car. I didn't blame you. I'm just trying to narrow down what it could be. I know, but you know how you find out if you have the allergies? You don't narrow it down. You don't eat like fish and go, nope, it's not fish. I didn't swell up. It's not shrimp. I didn't swell up. I'm doing you an go, elimination. You go to a doctor and they do an allergy test. Well, I was just trying to figure out if it was something that I could prevent before going to the doctor. Uh, and did we say Grammys? Yeah, we probably uh, did. Gabriel said Grammys are next Sunday, I think. Yeah, did I say we're live at the Grammys? No, you said Oscars. Okay, just check. Because, you know, I tend to jump ahead of stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. I live in the future. I'm already at the Grammys. Did you see Yeah, me? Gordon. A different pollens in Arizona. I have never. I just, living in California, never experienced this. We've been out here for, like, almost four years. Okay, I'm gonna and say this, this is the first time where I'm really experiencing, like. I want to say this. Arizona used to be the place where people came to get away from the allergies because the air was just, you know, we had sand and we had, uh, well, I don't know, we, they had sand and they had, uh, what are those things called? Scorpions and javelinas, John Javelina, Mr. Javelina. Uh, they all those things, but they didn't have a whole lot of uh, pollen. But then people started moving here and they brought the plants with them that people are allergic to. So why is it so much worse this year for me than it has been the entire, the other three years we've been here? Uh, why? Why, you ask? Why, I ask? I have no idea. Maybe because you just caught up. Yeah, Jason, it will be four years in September. Yeah, Stanley, when are you going to win a Grammy? Uh, I won a Grammy already. It's already I already got it. It's, just don't know where it is. It's sitting somewhere in a Grammy warehouse and with the S on it, but they didn't finish the name because they couldn't figure it out. I remember my first TV show I ever worked on was CBS uh, it was a long time ago with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was a CBS uh, TV special called Education First. And it was my first time ever doing a major motion picture, um, a motion, a movie production. And I worked with a, a director, an old friend of mine, um, Nigel Dick. And if you don't recognize Nigel Dick's name, he's won a lot of MB- MTV awards for, for, for music videos. Um, we worked together on uh, the OJs and uh, uh, one of their videos. So Nigel called me Wait, on a lot of his- Did different... you work together on 992 Arguments? No, that was different. Okay, So got it. Nigel Dick, we were propaganda films and we worked on a lot of stuff. Matter of fact, I even did the um, Rebuild LA thing. I was one of the uh, cameramen for Rebuild LA. Okay. But my first big one was uh, with CBS, Education First, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the host and I did camera. And I was so excited because I was doing this major thing and my name was gonna be in the credits. So super excited. Everybody oh, at home. I remember this story. I call everybody back home. I'm going to be on. I'm doing this show. They're going to have my name on the credits. 
I can't wait. And um, we did miss you, random stupid user. You know who that is, right? No, who's that? Las Vegas. Who's Las Vegas? Really? Oh, you did forget him that fast. Master? Yeah, Master Oh, Freezer. now he's random stupid user? No, he's always had that name. Oh, I didn't know Master that. Master Freezer is a different name. So anyway, before I get off course, so I told my family, hey, I'm going to be, you're going to see my name in the credits. Uh, it's going to be with CBS. It's going to be on this big TV, national TV special. I'm like, I'm so excited. And then, the, the, you know, we shot it. It wasn't live. We shot it. So it was already done. So we went and it aired. And I was like, I can't wait. I'm watching it. And I'm watching it. And I already seen it because I shot it. Yeah. But you hadn't seen the credits, I haven't though. haven't seen the credits. So yeah. the credits roll. And it says, all the, and they got to the camera part. They go, you got my name. And it said Stanley Tarantino. Who? Yeah, he's a musician. Apparently, they forgot my name, so they just figured it might be a Theron Turrentine. So I never got my name in the actual credits. That's lame. My first national show, and they spelled my, they got my name almost completely wrong. That's lame. So I've had other things wrong. I mean, if people don't even know it, but they've actually seen me in movies, they just don't know they've seen me. I've, I've, used, I've done some hand acting where they forgot to shoot the part where the guy's hand was in one of the scenes. So they had me fill in with his hands. What movie would that be? It was uh, it was called um, Dead Ringer, with uh, um. So your hands are in Dead yeah, Ringer. With Michael Madsen and Lisa Bonet. So your hands. So my hands were in the shot. Yeah, and I also sat uh, for Dead Ringer. They had me in the back of the car where they were shooting it, and I was laying down in the back of the car, and I was reading the guy his script because he couldn't remember his lines. So my job was to give him his lines while we're driving around. And it's so funny when you're doing films because you're literally on a dolly. So there's a, it's not, you're not actually driving. It's on this dolly that's kind of like just slightly off the ground. And they pull the car down the street. And then there's a flash, a light bulb hanging over it on the side. Mm -hmm. So the light bulb goes off every couple of minutes to make it look like we're passing street lights. And it's so oh weird. My God. And so every time we had to do the shot, we would have to go back and reset and do the whole thing again. And I would have to give the guy his lines. Every single time I'd be like, okay, this is your next line. And they'd be like, cut, go back and do it again. And I give him his lines. So you would never see me in the video, but I was there. Wait, but I would see your hands though, right? No, you wouldn't see me. No, you see my hands, but that was just for so a So I'll away. see your hands like, so your hands were, back, so back in that day. Your hands were deadly. Your hands were like, what, 20 something years old? How old were your hands back then? Because My trying, hands didn't have birthdays. I'm, I'm trying to figure out when I watch it, what kind of hands am I looking for? Am I looking for early 20s, late 20s, mid like mid 30 hands? Like, what am I looking for? <laughs> stand in hands is what I had. Stand in hands? Yeah, George Costanza hands. Oh, no. These hands were magical. George Costanza, you before know, he burned it, before he accidentally had the... from the Philippines. Before he had his hands on the... Yeah, so so craziest part about working in the film industry is that your first job is, like, not, I'm not an extra. Um, well, extras are, like, you you get you used to get paid 16-hour days for $100, $100 for one day. But they would feed you. And so you have, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you didn't really work the whole time you were there. You sat around and wait to work. So it was fun. And it was weird seeing sets that you see. And you know that. And that's why when I watch movies now, you get all caught up in it. And like, oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. I'm just crying. Oh, my God. It's, it's so sad. Or why did they do that? Oh, my God. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? I'm like, it's just okay. the movie. Uh, number one, I don't sound like that. And number two, I don't sound like that. Uh, and can you, and Gabriel asked a good question. Uh, can you really tell someone's hands age? Like, well, you can tell if they're really old looking at their hands. So, yes. That's true. Yep. Um, Gabriel says, how, Hey, Stanley, how did you transform back to yourself after using that magic spray? Oh, isn't that crazy? Well, you know, it only worked for 10 seconds or like 20 seconds. Yeah, his face went back to normal after that. Yeah, just poof right back. It's and I, I walked in the room and was like, Hey, that's me. Yep. It was funny. She didn't even know she had done it. She didn't even know she was involved until she saw it. And it, it was, okay, so just so you know, it was a parody. It was a parody. It wasn't just something we made up. It was a parody because there was a video out that had people fooled. It was on TikTok, and I posted on Twitter a copy of it where the woman sprayed a spray on her face, and as she sprayed it, she turned 20 years younger. And she told people that she fooled people 
by Edith Spray. Well, and she said too that her, even her husband or her kids had never seen her in her like older version. Yeah. Well, no, I can't demonstrate because I ran out of spray. And I also love how you like sprayed your eyes. Yeah, you like, do you know you sprayed right into your eyes? I'm like, you swim with your eyes open, don't you? No. So you just swim into walls until you. I, the... I don't swim. Oh. Well, I swim and I swim my eyes open. 20 years in the sex change, Lord Frieza says. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so back to the film industry. So I was, I did a lot of different things with, um, with, wait a minute, Sam Roberts, one time Lionel Boom introduced the two of them backwards. I responded by saying, and they both underwent voice, skin, and brain chain surgeries. That was you. Oh, yeah, because I said I was a millennial. Yeah. So um, back to the film industry. Yeah, so I worked in a few films. Um, I don't always get credit for the films. Because you always get credit for a lot of things. I get credit for stuff, but I don't usually get credit for the actual films I worked on. I worked on films, I worked on movies, I worked on a lot of breaking stories like the Menendez twins, uh, nope. OJ Simpson. They weren't twins. The Menendez, Menendez brothers. brothers. Okay, well. Yeah, okay. they weren't twins. I think they were like a year or two apart. Uh, and someone, this is the best, this is the best urban podcast. Well, thank you. We're waiting for our Oscar. <laughs> our OSKAR. We're waiting for our OSKAR on. Mr. Badley, Mr. Badley, Mr. Badley, Badley Productions, Productions TV with our with our uh, linoleum carpet, l l linoleum shoot. You know what I mean? <laughs> linoleum. Don't even try to say it. L linoleum. Uh, hi, Stanley. I hope it's not topic. I reposted your video of the gun robbery uh, of the Canadian documentary crew that was robbed. Yeah, it's a little off topic, but that's okay because yes, we did post it. That and... was wild. And I was. And and I tell you all the time that people will try to tell you that that it's not really a, a representation of San Francisco. Yeah. But I have an argument about that. And what is my argument? Wait, Very good. Wait, what? What is my argument? Sorry, about? I was busy reading Gabriel's comment. What's my argument about when people say I have a, a system about how I identify when there's a problem? Yeah. And I, I tweeted about it a few days ago. One of my things is I used to stand on the corner to figure out if there was a problem on this corner. And if I saw something happen within a 10 minute time frame without shooting a, a second of video, I said, okay, so people are telling me that there's a problem here. And if you stand here for 10 minutes, can I see this problem? If I didn't see the problem, I would assume that it wasn't really a problem or it wasn't at that particular, it wasn't to the level that I thought it was worth a story. On. And there were a few stories where I was showing up and it was like, I don't feel this story is warranted. Well, because you were there for a long time and didn't see anything happen. Well, 10 minutes is what my window is. because, and, and I know you're going, but 10 minutes isn't a long time. But if you see 10 items or 10 people do the same thing in a 10 minute time frame, you know that's a problem. And there are cases. I feel like even if you see it happen once, that is that could be potentially a problem. Yes. If you see it happen well, no, once. No, once is Depending it's, on it's, what it's, it no, is. No, once will make me go, okay, it just happened. Let's see if it happens again. Well, what if, okay, so what if you're there for 30 minutes and it happens once every 10 minutes and it happens three times while you're there? Well, a problem? My goal was to look for at least five examples. But here's the, here's the catch. When I do my stories, you know for a fact that 10, 15, 20 minutes of the video gets thrown away. Because if I can't prove that what I said you did, then I will not use it. So I need to know by a, without a, without a, uh, was it? Without a doubt. Without a doubt that what I got on video, and sometimes I don't know for sure. So I will shoot and shoot and shoot and go back and look at the video and go, oh, wait, it did happen. Because your eyes can play tricks on you. Hello, Maxim. Welcome. Um, and thank you, Paul, for uh, for what we do. We try to be safe out there. Um, there's been a lot going on. We are, you know, doing what we do normally every day. We're out here trying to make you guys understand that, you know, life is fast and, and moves fast and forward. And now you're back to the early morning shift. Yeah. So after we end um, on this note in about half an hour, I will be going to bed. So funny how that works. Yes. I'm back to the early morning shift for about a month. So I mean, she goes to bed and then, or, I, go to, and then I wake up when I go to bed, she's waking up. No, that's not true. Are you going to bed at three? Two ish. Oh yeah. Well, I'm waking up at three. So we're back to that again. <laughs> but is it long term? Well, they'd say it's a month, but I don't know. Okay. Like, so You know, my... I just take it a day at a time. That's all I can do. That's all I'm given. That's all we're given, so I take it a day at a time. Yep, and some other cool stuff has happened, but we are not going to talk about it right now. We're going to hold on to it and see how it plays out. But I just want to say there's some cool stuff in the works. 
And we'll be excited once we figure out how they're going to work out. Let's just say I'm very proud of this guy. So, yes. He does great work and uh, he's, he's, uh, you're very good and hardworking. So, are we going to shift any of them earlier? No. no. I mean, this is only, if it ends up going longer than a month, we'll have to rethink See, it. See, here's the problem with shifting times. You ready? Are you telling me the problem or I'm do I need everybody. to explain the problem of no, shifting times? People are creatures of habit. So when you, you when you abruptly change the time too much, you lose people are like, well, wait, you, you moved it? It's like, you know, you put a stop sign, if they put a stop sign at an intersection, they have to warn you a month in advance that there's gonna be a new stop sign. Because people will just drive and go, Oh, whoa, wait, wait, whoa, wait, who put a stop sign here? People don't look, people don't like change. People don't like change unless it's changed from the the hundred dollar bill they just cash. You wanna know something that's hilarious? Or something that's funny that I ended up telling someone and they were like, I can't believe you just now realize this. What? That as a person, you know, I don't like change, right? I like change. Like I really, I really. If it's quarters. I don't, I don't like change. Like I don't like if you change things on me, I like to be prepared. So as someone who doesn't like change. OCD, basically. Whatever. As someone who doesn't like change, I am in an industry that is constantly changing with no preparation, like with no warning for preparation. Hey, David. Yeah. Well, you know what? This is the industry. And where it took it, me and it took me forever to realize it. Change can be good and change can be bad. The problem that I have with change now is that it's changed to where news isn't unbiased anymore. It's just you have their own. A lot of people have their own opinions. Well, it's unbiased for me. Well, for you, I'm talking about. But I'm talking about if you watch in general, um, in some news, you go, it's not no longer. You, before you had to have two sides every story, this and this, and now it's just this. And then everybody takes this and goes, this must be it. You know I what? Feel I, like, I feel like a Seinfeld moment. Everybody take this and this, but and then they, but then they got rid of this and only kept this. And this is what people go off of. Do you know why that is? Because why I think that I'll is? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you my opinion, too. Dead presidents. Nope, I'll tell you my... Well, that and another thing is that in actuality, when you think about a story... Listening? Oh. In actuality, when you're thinking about a story... I'm just, I just need him to look at me so I know he's listening, but I know he's looking at the comments. So when you have a story, most people think there are two sides to every story, right? In actuality, there can be multiple sides to a story. So what ends up happening is instead of telling the multiple sides, because perhaps maybe you can't get all of the multiple sides, you only tell one side. Now, that could be a number of things, right? That could be considered laziness. That can be considered uh, what? What else? Um, well, I mean, sometimes, and I will, to the benefit of some of the reporters, they are rushed to get a story on the air mm. because they have an expectation. I have a deadline that you need to be on the air. We don't care. Just give us something. And they'll say, I don't care if you stand up of empty house and talk about it. And we call those thumb suckers. Where you, oh, I never use that. Yeah. Term I use before. the word thumb suckers because you stand there and you basically going, Oh, what behind me? You know, nothing's really going on. I have on. never heard that term Oh, I before. call them thumb suckers because you're, oh. so that's what you I don't like live shots just to be, just to be live. Oh, Matt B with the 20 US dollars. Thank you, Matt, on the Super Chat. So in case you guys don't know, Super Chat is when you. Thanks, Matt you, B. You donate to us as we're doing this and it helps us keep this thing on the air because even though we're doing this and we're not getting paid to do it, um, these, the, the equipment we're using has to be maintained and paid for. And so the system we're using you know, it's, you know, we pay for this and this money goes towards that. So thank you for the uh, 20 super chat, $20. Thank you, uh, Matt. We really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, everybody feel, yeah, lemonade stand. Exactly. So Matt just contributed to the lemonade stand. Oh yeah. I love that. So that and, and remember that's my, he old posted that but on I want to go back with Friday, go. right? So um, the, uh, David asked, did we ever catch the men that robbed the van and how to ask we, we don't know. If they we don't we don't believe they were caught and we almost surely they weren't caught and Ashley apparently is fine just a little traumatized and no Ashley was the one that was outside of the car and then right you get in the car and yeah Ashley okay was like, yeah oh look you're robbing instead of getting in the car and they're like, Ashley get in the car yeah because the last thing you want is for them to point a gun at her yeah and if you notice one of the guns had an extended magazine which in and California is illegal so it's and it's getting crazy you know and, and as a journalist. Um, and back to what I was saying about the, uh, without getting too far off, off base, 
was that what I noticed is I stand on the corner, I watch, and I pay attention to what's going on. But if you can see it showing up on cell phones on a regular upbeat, not upbeat, because that's a, a regular, you know, there's Basis. a difference. Yeah. When you see it so much, that means that there is a problem. And we see it so much in San Francisco. And, and I would, used to say that, you know, it's not, it's, it's not that, I used to say, I used to say, and I will say, I, I will admit that I'm wrong. I used to say that it's not that the, the crime has gotten worse. It's that we have more people recording it. Mm -hmm. But I will literally say now, and this was after Kevin Ishida was killed, that that changed the dynamics of everything. Because um, everybody is on edge now. And you know that someone actually physically died from one of these robberies. And it's really bad because everything always happens to someone you don't know. Um, but this case, it was someone who I did know. And before the news even got out, my phone was already ringing. You remember that. And he's like, hey, I'm going to call you and tell you uh, something happened to Kevin. And he, he was shot. And I was like, what? And he said, um, yeah, so just want to let you know in advance. Um, I talked to his wife. She wanted to make sure I called you first. So they did. They called me, and that's what happened. And that's when I found out what had happened. So I knew about it before most people knew. And I, I, I didn't say much. And finally, I finally put something out and it was on a case where, and you know, people get confused about when you write something and they have their own, you've seen me write something and people have their own story about they have their whatever. own per, like assumption of what you are actually trying to say. So yeah. So instead of actually reading it for what it is. Yeah. And I, and I said it before that how people tend to look at a video or look at something you post and go, well, where's the link? I'm like, you mean the link that's right there in the video? You mean that link right there where it says link click here? I have no idea. I like what Chris said. He said, with news, you need to read multiple sources and piece together the facts. Right. And, as yes. a, and see, the problem is, and I'm, I'm going to say this, and and as a matter of fact, Gabriel, make sure you record this part because this is important. A long time ago, when news was done, it was done by people in the news industry. So there was no um, bottom line. It was just they spent the money, they got the news out, and it was paid for and they put it out, NBC, CBS, ABC, they were, you know, they had the Walter Cronkites, um, all those different people that did the news. Then, probably in the 90s, late 90s, I think early 90s, they were started, the TV stations were being bought up by General Electric, companies that don't normally do news. And when, you, when you're brought up by a corporation of that sort, it tends to swing the pendulum in a different way. And if you know what a pendulum is, it goes back and forth and until it knocks something over. Well, it seems to change the dynamics of everything because now they went from telling the news story um, to how can we make money? How can we turn this into a revenue generating uh, business? Because the, the revenue that was generated before was off of commercials. Mm -hmm. So commercials paid for news. If you had a news, you had a commercial that paid for it. Now we're from our sponsor. That was how it was paid for. That was it. Mm -hmm. Then they added corporations who had stocks and bonds and shareholders who wanted a cut of the pie. So then they said, well, we're not getting enough of this pie. So instead of, you know, a dollar a share, we want $10 a share or whatever, however they, they slice it up. So we need you to cut the staff. We need to lay off people and make them do more for less. That's crazy. So back then when it was regular news, people got paid a lot of money to do the news. But when the shareholders kicked in, the ones who sit back in their, their special rooms with all the, you know, with the money and watch the stuff and don't know nothing about news, they sit back and they literally uh, say, I don't like that. Why do you do that story? I don't like that story at all. And that's why some stations are like, when you have like Disney owns some news channels and their philosophy is we don't want to see dead bodies. So you won't see dead bodies on, 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 on Disney channels. On, on the news because they don't want people to see that kind of stuff. So it, it, it swings the pendulum into a different direction because they want to save money, make money. And they, and then they found out that remember CNN was, you know, all news and live and great, great stuff. Uh -huh. And then they switched and, and it happened around the Malaysia air thing. And I realized there was a pivotal shift during that Malaysia air crash because they found a wing and they came back on with breaking news. And they were breaking news about this wing they found for a month. For a whole month. See you, Lord Freeza. We're going to miss you. 
Yes, Disney owns ESPN and, and ABC News. Um, so they literally did that to, you know, and, and, and they realized, oh, wait, this works. So now if you turn on CNN now, every single thing is breaking news. But and yeah, they have the live bug and up. And it's not breaking. They have the live bug up for stuff that's not, that's recorded. But you would assume that it's live because the average person doesn't pay attention. So that's why uh, Susan Dyer Reynolds and myself are trying to change that. We're trying to go back to the way it used to be, the way when it was unbiased and unapologetic, uh, and we don't mind telling you the real story. And we're not worried that we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about if someone decides to cancel us because our you know by going through one of our sponsors we don't want to, we're not going to have sponsors i'm well, not saying we won't but we won't have it to the point where sponsors control what we do and that's the problem is now is that people you know if you have xyz soap and they sponsor this product product by xyz soap or you know and then all of a sudden xyz soap says well we don't like that story oh then we have to kill it oh yeah or it's like when it's like when a car like a, a car has a recall and then like if that if they have a, a if they have a spot in one of your like commercial breaks or something like you know what wh you know it's like what do you do then yeah it's like do you tell the story or do you not because they're sponsoring you yeah exactly so, so you don't want to lose that sponsorship because if you if you tell that story oh and i'll tell you i actually caught some businesses that were behaving badly i literally caught them behaving badly and I had them dead to rights. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to tell the story. And all of a sudden, I had people running around in circles wondering, what are they? You see them running back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you and you see little meetings over here. And I'm like, what are they What are they meeting about? What? And you, you kind of, in your mind, kind of know that someone called up and said, hey, we're paying to put our stuff on your air. And you're about to air something about one of our guys that you caught behaving badly. And we don't want to see that on the air. So now they don't want to come back and tell me not to do it. But then it goes up the food chain. Because once you say it's news, because I've always been a person, if I catch it and I see it, it's going on TV. Then it became, well, we can't, you know, uh, my, my boss would be like, well, no, if he got it, it's going to be on TV. Well, then they don't, they don't just hang up and go, okay, fine. They call up the next person. You know, when you go to a restaurant and you like the food and you tell the waiter, this food sucks. And the waiter goes, yeah, well, that's all we got. And you go, well, let me speak to your boss. And then their boss comes and they go, oh, that's all we got. And they go, oh, no, I'm going to speak to your boss then. And then it goes, and then you still don't get it. You get the food you eat, you hate it. Then you go home and you email or write the like corporation. corporate. Yeah. You know, and these people are like, I do not want this on the air because, and I'm like, do you realize it's not that serious? But their name is involved in it. And People Behaving Badly series had such an impact such an impact in the bay area and not just in the bay because i'll tell you we had people that would approach us in canada in toronto canada in vancouver uh, we had them in in the middle of the desert out in palmdale and the guy's like hey you're that guy you you and you're like oh i'm like oh gosh cool but like in a way it's like oh we can't go anywhere and then have someone not yeah, my you. favorite part of doing this series and doing when I did people being badly my favorite part was people who thought they knew the law better than me oh and I love that one because they would always try to cite the law to me as if I had no clue what the law was I had a lady who told me that her friend was a was a doctor and, and I said I know her friend was a lawyer and I said well I have a friend who's a dentist that doesn't mean I get to pull teeth so and I had I, I, I feel like you said this last week I once had a well I once had a, a lawyer who told me that if I put him on TV he was going to sue me and I said, here, let me give you my phone so you can call your lawyer, because it's your lawyer. And the cops said to him, dude, you're out in public. You're fair game. I tell people, if you don't want to be on TV, stay home. Or just don't do bad stuff. I don't do stupid stuff. Don't break the law. Don't, you know, it's funny, but, and, and it's not always a law. It's just sometimes it's just stupidity. Yeah. It does, you know, it's not always you're breaking the law. And, and OK, but this is what really gets me now. This is the most important part, is that nowadays, People were like, I don't want to be on TV. I don't want to be on TV. I don't want to be on TV. I don't want to be on anywhere. I don't put my face on TV. But now they all. Well, it's a different kind of, that's a different kind of TV. They're all up on TikTok. Yeah. And they're doing some stuff in there that I would never do, ever in real life. And they're like, I'm going to do this. It's 
it's really stupid. Like the, the mom that put her, do you see the one where the mom had her kid and said and wrote in letters, um, F you? I don't watch TikTok like that. She gave her daughter some food and it was spelled out the word F you mm -hmm. and posted it on TikTok and then defended herself by doubling down by going, well, she can't read. Yeah, but it's the optics of you giving a baby a, a, a plate of food with F you on it and then saying, I love you. And then wondering why people are upset. And then, but posting it. Yes. That that takes a, stu a special kind of stupid to post something that insensitive. <laughs> Gabriel said that was an interesting dance. Yeah, that was my, um, you know, my uh, yeah, TikTok he won't, dance. Yeah, he won't do a dance with me on TikTok, you know but, he'll, but he'll do that. You know why I don't do dance on TikTok? Because Cause you dance like that? No. You dance like Elaine from Seinfeld. No, I definitely do not. Anyway, so two reasons why I don't do a lot of TikToks because two reasons I didn't do I didn't do two that time is because when we try to do TikToks, I just want to do it. No, she comment. wants to do it over and over. Not true. And, oh my God, this hair! Oh my God, that gray hair! Oh, you know it's come on. Not true. Not true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was it. So, oh yeah, the Gorilla Glue one. I remember that. That was a bad. That was so bad. Oh, but remember the guys in. Remember, remember the guys in in Oakland that Gorilla, gorilla duct taped themselves to the side of a car and drove down the eight eighty freeway. Oh yeah. In front of the Coliseum. That's stupid too. And I'm like, or I mean, how stupid can you be? And they go, Hey, we're gonna do something else. I'm like, What? I'm I'm a little confused. You know, and so it became like, and, and it became buffoonery, like that movie Jackass kind of triggered a lot of these people doing stupid stuff, getting themselves killed. Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Didn't that that came out in the nineties, right? Yes. That was before social media. But hey, did you want to talk about what we saw when we were at the restaurant today? Okay. Yes. Okay. You start. I didn't notice it. Yeah, but you noticed it. When I, I noticed it attention. afterwards, and I was like, "Holy!" So we went to grab some pizza today, and I'm not going to say it in the restaurant because we're not going to throw them under the bus 100. percent However, you know they have these blouses that sometimes are skin tone. Well, let's just say that each person that works there can wear whatever they want. Whatever they want. Yeah. And sometimes you think, "Oh, it must be skin tone because why would anybody wear a shirt with their breasts exposed?" Well, you just like went for it. Just went for it. And sure enough, I go, wait. I see. Yeah, because he had, he goes, he goes, hey, don't look now, but like, look at that waitress over there. Is is her shirt see through? And I like, or is it, or is it just flesh tone? Yeah, and I couldn't tell. And then when I got a closer view, I was like, oh, I, I said, saw her areola. Oh, that's a nipple. I saw her areola. I'm like, why is, I'm like, I don't know. I was a little confused. And we confirmed with our neighbors behind us, too. I was like, wait, is her people... breast? And it wasn't a strip club. No, it was just a regular pizza joint. With her nipples out. Well, seeing through the shirt. It was like a black mesh, a black mesh see-through shirt. With nipples. Okay, yeah, because that's all you can focus on right now. But, yes, yeah, so the nipples were showing. And hopefully, uh, I don't know, is this a freaking, is this a 18 and up? Yeah, it's 18 and up. Okay. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, so we saw it. We confirmed it with our neighbors because we asked to because they had her as a waitress. And then um, they said, yes, it was see-through. And we were just like, well, I guess like a company policy or maybe there is no company Jason policy. Jason Ratchet Pizza Place. Actually, it wasn't very ratchet. No, it's a great place. Like, we love this place. We love this place. But it was our first time to see something like that happen. And, and, and she goes, please, whatever you do. Don't mention the nipples. Oh, I was like, don't, don't mention, mention it because that we had another person serve us afterwards, and I was like, if you mention that to him, I am going to go straight to the car. And he, sure enough, just fitted in there really quick and was like, "What did you say? You did it so nonchalant." I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Well, I was like, "Yeah." So we got pizza and we got nipples, and she goes, "No!" I was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe he just said." Me. So apparently, um, uh, Gabriel said that uh, he was seventeen when he first started. Well, back then. It was 10 and over, but then we realized once you didn't know what areola was, we raised it to 18. There we go. Is that good? Bam. What is this? So back to the Oscars. Wait, what is this? That means, um, you know, I don't know. I just made it up. It'll be, you know what's weird though? Have Are you, you sure noticed, you're the millennial? Have you noticed that 
when I made TV Man 1981 on YouTube, there became a lot of TV Man 1981 to underscore. And so then I had uh, Mr. Badly uh, on Instagram. And then all of a sudden now there's like 12 Mr. Badly accounts, but you know, they underscore Mr. Badly, all different versions. And, you know, it's like, you know, it's almost like that. What's that thing where it's, you see the same thing over again? You wonder if you ever noticed it before? Repetitive. Oh, it's like RP something. <laughs> It's this time of the show. Oh, you know what? We didn't have the light on. It's the time it's getting dark outside again. Oh, is this the time of the show when it gets dark outside and you have to turn on the overhead light? Yeah, well, we should have turned that on before we started. Do you want me to do it this time? Yeah, you and turn over the blinds up. Oh, I'm wearing shorts. Oh, you don't have any you don't have any bottom on. No, I have on shorts. No, you sit down. I'll get it. Uh, it you can't here. you can't do it from over there. Okay. No, you yeah, can't. Yeah. Told you. You don't listen to me. Ooh, look at them legs. Woohoo! Whatever. Open, the, open up the lines too. It's nighttime here, and people, not nighttime in California yet, but it's nighttime here. There we go. We're at the same time as California. But it's not dark there yet, though. The sun still sets the way it sets. I mean, we looked in California right now. It's still okay, I'm back. All right, welcome back. You can see my legs. All right, nice legs. Oh, well, thank you. All right, so you know what I just noticed too? What? It's starting to heat up again. Yeah, it was 93 today. Mm. But we're gonna get another um we're getting another storm this week. I can't wait for the monsoons. Oh, I can wait. I love those things. Lightning, thunder, wind, dust, everything you ever want in a storm. No thanks. Little little dust clouds, everything. No thanks. And I love lightning. Well, yeah, but see, you don't have to cover them. No, I used to stand out. You know, it's funny you mentioned that. So a news person, people be like, oh, my God, the weather is so terrible outside. To see the weather being terrible, you have to watch the news. Because the news person stand out there and all the gear gets soaking wet just so they can show you that it's raining outside. Jimmy Kimmel used to do a funny bit on that. We show how the news will make fun of the rain. It's so funny. Christopher, hello. I'd like the nipple pizza. Hi, Stanley. Hey, Stanley from the tri-community area. Sun just set in Arizona. Well, yes, I'm in Arizona, so you're absolutely right. Rain in San Francisco right now. Oh, I miss the rain. I can't stand the rain. But I just don't like monsoon. Against my window. Well, that's rain. You either like the rain or no, you don't like the rain. No, but like I don't like everything else that comes with it. Because when it's monsoon, it's also hot I when it rains. I can't stop the rain. It's stand the rain. No, I want my own. No, I'm I can't stand the rain. Sing it. Come on, Missy Elliott. Against my window. I can't stand it. Um, do you like monsoons? How about typhoons? Never been in a typhoon, but you know a typhoon is isn't it the reverse of? I've a, been in a typhoon in the when it, I was in the it, Philippines. Wait, isn't the typhoon the reverse of a um, hurricane? Because hurricanes go clockwise and typhoons go counterclockwise because of the. the I just know they're in, they're in, they're on the like eastern side of the of the world. Oh, um, uh, Gabriel, go never understand why people want tattoos. Uh, but hey, I guess whatever you want, you do it yourself. I never want a tattoo because I can't see myself being nine years old with a tattoo of like, a, you know, I don't know, something on my arm. What are you talking about? You were planning on getting my name tattooed on your hand. You were planning on doing D-I-A-N-E. And then over here, you're planning on doing F-A-I-T-H, Faith, remember? No. Yeah. Go you're planning love. on doing Diane Faith. I'm going to do love and peace. No, Diane Faith. No, I'm going to have B-L-A-C-K-E-Y-E. There you go. No. Did you get that? Could you try again? Okay. <laughs> she didn't get your joke. See, it was that bad. No, you said you're gonna do Diane I never and then said, I don't Faith, do tattoos. and it's exactly the you know right the, number, you know, you know a the, right the, amount you know, of num letters. You know, the, you know what a keloid, a keloid is? No, but I know what a keloid is. You, know what a keloid you is? said that wrong along with a couple of other words you know earlier. What a keloid is? It's when your skin raises up and you get Beep. like piercing. Beep, I know what it is. Do you know that some people get, get tattoos a, and it raises their skin? It's called a keloid, not a yeah. keloy. Yeah, I want tattoos on my face. That's what it is. Don't get, put bumper stickers on your Bentley. We were uh, just talking about that yesterday. today. Yeah. I want you to get a. I want you to get a, 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 a tattoo, right right here. Just goes, damn, right there, right above your eyebrow. Only if you get Diane face. Okay, you do it first. No, because if I do it, you're not gonna follow. It'd be just like the uh, the, the the dollar bus, what? the mega bus. You make me use it, and you never get on it. Are you never going to drop that? 
Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. Well, there's no deal. When she was in LA, I used to take the mega bus. You to took her. it twice. Three times. Twice. Three times. I can tell you when I took it because I parked my car and left it there and came back three times. So the mega bus. And she said, if you take the mega bus down to visit me, I'll take it back one day. That was a trick. I, I don't talk like that. Never took the mega bus. It's too late. Because I had a, my work schedule was it's hard. Too for nasty. Me. My work schedule was for, was too hard for me to do that. Shenanigans. Until this day, he's still mad. I never took the mega bus to see him. Because you were because we had an agreement that you that you reneged on. But I still came up to see you. I just flew. Yeah, but which I, was even better because I got to see you sooner. And no, I had. Do you know what it's like to ride the mega bus? It's a twelve hour ride where they stop off in the middle of Bun F Idaho, and say. And oh, eat some lunch real quick at three in the morning, and I, then you get back on the bus and you drive. I think I've done a few things to make up for that. Just think <sighs> about it. Think about it and get back to me. No, nothing ever relates to stopping off in uh, what's that city? Uh, Bakersfield. No, just outside of Bay with the sticky cows. Oh, Colinga. Colinga at a little rest stop where you eat some. You get to get. I think it's like one o'clock in the morning. Uh, is this no? Is that a Greyhound bus? Greyhound bus. You ever rode a Greyhound bus? I rode no. Greyhound when you're allowed to smoke. Oh no! I never understood how you could get smoke in the back of the bus, but you can't smoke in the front. But it's a bus. There's nowhere to go. It travels. You are a genius. You should have worked for Greyhound. She'd be like, "Hey, that doesn't work." Go Greyhound and leave the driving to us. What do you know all of the like motos? I know all the logos. No, not mottos. logos. Mo oh, I said motos. Uh, mottos. Yeah. So, yes, I do know the old Greyhound motto. And I rode Greyhound once. The Where'd you go? Um, it was in the back east and I went somewhere. I forgot where. Oh, I know. Wait, I remember. I took Greyhound from. Salinas to the airport when I wanted to go back to New York. I didn't have a way to get there when I lived in Salinas. You took the Greyhound from Salinas to New York? No. The Greyhound from Salinas to SFO. Oh, I was about to say. Yeah, sorry. I was about to say, that is a long... Does Greyhound even go that far? Oh, yeah. You just have to change. You know, it's like... You ever? You know, I never... I never said we're going to wrap this up shortly. Is Amtrak. Okay. It's on a train. It's on a tr it's, it's on, on tracks. tracks. Yes. All right. It just goes straight. Yes. It goes to the next stop. But for some reason, and I figured out why, it takes twenty six hours to take to go a six hour drive. If you drove in your car, you do it in six hours. If you get on Greyhound, it takes you twenty six hours. No Amtrak. You're saying Amtrak. You yeah. said Greyhound. Well, Amtrak. Well, Greyhound's even longer. And you know why? I figured out why. All the stops. Not only just all the stops. All the idiots on the train tracks that get in the way and they have to stop. Mm -hmm. Because there's like a million roads and like 100,000 uh, miles of train track. But somehow or another, the cars manage to be right on that one little small step of thing with a train. It's not like you can't tell that these metal things on the ground are not going to have a huge device riding on them. Huge device. <laughs> okay. And Fred Tolson goes, the Oscars are just an elite circle jerk. And do you know what a circle jerk is? Uh, a circle of jerks? No. It's a giant reach around. No. Think about it. We'll come back to you. A giant reach around. Yeah. A giant reach around. Like Somebody give her the like answer. An orgy? It, no. Oh. Somebody reach into the quote, into the um, into text and tell her what a giant reach around is and a circle jerk. I don't want to do anything that like would you know would cause uh, us to get you know canceled or something like that. So someone type it into the uh, in somebody's tapping right now. It's gonna be a whole bunch of stuff telling you what a circle jerk is. You're gonna be like, oh my god. Yeah, there's always you know what's funny about mountain lions. So Gabriel wrote, did you hear about the mountain lion spotted near a hair salon in Irvine, California? Yeah. <laughs> Laugh out loud, Stan needs, needs a pivot man. <laughs> and then uh, Khalil says, This is sexual. Okay. So is me, it? Let me tell you your ear. Okay. Okay. But I did. Okay. You know how you get some practice, right? You're the one. Uh, a whole bunch of guys in the circle. You're the 
Oh my gosh. You got it now? Did you but you didn't whisper though, so the <laughs> mic might have still caught it up. Hello, caught it. Up. Hi Khalil. Know. Well, if the mic caught it, then Gabriel definitely let us know. Because he's like, triple jerk. What is a triple jerk? You gotta add it to my whip draw. Oh god, I've never heard that saying before, but that sounds like that was an image I didn't want to picture. Yeah. But that's what it is. Basically a bunch of people giving each other. You know, but I mean, I I kind of disagree a little bit. I mean, if you work hard, you want to get something to show for it, other than that one billion dollar paycheck you get. You know, a statue. And you know, here's what the deal is with a statue. So what is the statue made out of? It's supposed to be it's gold plated, it's not solid gold. I uh, yeah, you. I figured that. Um oh Gabriel's lost, so he didn't hear it. Oh, so okay. So so no one heard what Stanley said. Okay. So so basically, um the Oscar is um, can I use this as an example? Sure. So this is something. You know what? Better than that, hold this. I got a better idea. Oh gosh, here we go. I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen, B. It's there, but be careful though, because they're probably unscrewed. Yeah, it's very wide. Yeah, they are the unscrewed Oh, something's gonna break. Okay. So oh gosh, here we go. And we gotta tighten it up a little bit. So this is one of my awards for TV. Let me tighten it up again. It unscrews itself sitting around for so long. So here we go. This is, let's say this is an Oscar. And even TV people get these kind of awards. They get them Emmys, they get golden mics. Yeah. And so you've done a whole bunch of work. And in this business, you don't really get a whole lot of money except for the, like, the people up top. I have one question. You know how in the news business you have to pay to submit your stuff? Do they yeah, do this, that? Yes. They do, do they do that in yeah, Oscars too? Pay, but you know who okay. submits it? The movie industry, the movie company submits it. Yeah. And so they hope they win because if they win, they can get more money off the next movie. Mm -hmm. So when I win this, this tells everybody that look at me, I am the best of the best and that you should pay me more money. Yes. Hello. Hello. Is it me? So this. Just kidding. Oh, you need so, to screw it a little bit more. I know. It definitely needs a good screw. So anyway, there we go. So that's what it does. What is that term again? A wrap, a, a reach, um, a circle jerk. Oh, that is horrible. Yeah. So that's basically a bunch of guys giving each other yeah. a, pat yeah. on, a pat on the back would be a better way to put it. Okay. So everybody pat each other on the back in a circle. You did good. You did good. You... But you know what though? I mean, in the industry, I mean, if you get an Emmy or an Oscar, your value, your net value goes up. Uh, considerably. So, like the girl today who won. Yeah. That was her first. Now, her agent is already on the phone going. Yeah, the, he said that. That's what you said right when that happened, said, too. Her agent's already on the phone saying she's worth more money now because she won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. So, it's like if I didn't win an Oscar, I would still get 10 bucks an hour. But now that she won an Oscar, she can get 20 bucks an hour. What are you looking at? Did Will Smith just punch out and cuss? Chris Rock. Out. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. We're not really. We're not watching it right now, but um, we're recording if it. If it did, so. you can be sure they'll be rerunning. It's oh probably, yeah, for it's sure. Probably all acting. You know how they do on here. Everything is all. I will check it out though. But thank you, Carol. We definitely have to look forward to. Um, but you have to go to bed soon, so we're not going to be on here forever. I'm we, so sad. Yeah. So we're going to cut it short today. But um, we're just happy that you guys can, as usual, join us, and we we do appreciate it. We appreciate um, the. Uh, we want you to like, push the like button. Yes, Thank please you, like. Um, yeah, notoriety is important, as uh, Jason said. Um, it's important, you know, to accolades of what you do. Because it's kind of like if you have a regular job. Let's say you, you flip burgers for a living. Mm -hmm. And they don't give out awards for flipping burgers. They don't. But if your boss comes to you and says, hey, you know what? You have been one of our best employees flipping burgers for the last, you know, two or three months. Here's a gift card to wherever you want to do it is for $500. This is to say thank you for the work you've done. That goes a long way. Yeah. And the Oscar goes a long way to the public. The public votes on the, the Academy votes on it. Goes a long way. The problem is that it's become political. And everything now is political. And that's the bad part. So there was a time when it was just, hey, here's my Oscar. But then again, at that point, it wasn't, there was no diversity. So now they're trying to fight for diversity. And so they've been doing that. And I, and I applaud them for that. I personally am not a big Oscar watcher, but you like it. Nah. I don't even watch the Grammys. 
I like watching it, but sometimes I, there are certain parts of the show where I could do without. So, you know, just like, remember, I used to watch the, uh, what's this, the awards where they would give to all the rappers that fight each other? Oh, the BET Awards? No, not the BET, it was another one. MTV Awards? No, the, uh, it was the one where they would go, remember they, they, they had the West Coast, East Coast, that would fight each other? And, and, and the guy who went to prison, uh, Suge Knight, was up there talking about. Yeah, but I don't know what was, what, hip hop, was it hip hop awards? It might have been. The, do the, do the hip hop, does hip hop have awards? There was, no, there was a word for hip hop, but I can't think of the name of it. It wasn't BET, though. It was a different one. This was the mainstream, and they got up there and just acted a fool. And then they had a big fight, and, and then they, they kind of stopped it all together because people can't have nothing let's, nice. Let's see. Yeah, the goal tonight is for 777 likes. Uh, and if you're watching us on uh, Twitter, you cannot comment unless you went to the Twitch link that we posted on Twitter already. Um, if you're on Twitch, which we want you to be there, Vi the Vibe Awards? It might have been the Vibe, yeah. They had a huge fight there a long time ago. So, oh, Hip Hop Source, uh, oh, Source, Source Awards. Awards. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, that one got head. And I used to, and just for the record, I worked on the Soul Train Music Awards. Oh, Soul Train. Uh, I love I Soul worked, Train. I worked the Grammys. I worked the Oscars. I worked all those things. I know there is a reason why I loved you so much. Yeah. No, that's not the only reason. What's the other reason? We have so much in common. You, you did a lot of work on things I loved watching. Yeah, I did. And no, no one knows about it. I mean, there's nobody will ever going to know unless I tell them, hey, I did this, I did this, I did this. People just think, oh, you don't even, you just been in TV. You just got in TV. I'm like, where'd you come from anyway? I've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> yep, you're getting close to 100 million blue episodes by my calculations. You'll get there on May 8th if you don't miss any Sundays between now and then. Wow, what should we do on the... On the well, before episode. I think it was April, but then we missed a couple, so now it's May. What do we do? We we should give away something. Give away a free you tank get, of gas. I was gonna say you want to give away free gas. Yeah, we we'll get a ticket, a, a, a coupon for Taco Bell. Free gas. Yes, Jason, we do have some updates, but we're not will, willing to divulge them yet. But I can say that some of the stuff is good news, and once we are in the situation too. Reveal the good news. We will let everyone know. But, you know, sometimes I want to sit on it before I get all excited and say, look what happened. And then nothing happens. Uh, yeah. So we're at the Oscars adjacent to, but nowhere near. And that's Oscars with a K. Oscars with a K. And we've already walked down the linoleum carpet. carpet. Yes. And we even have, oh, grab that bag over there. We have our bag of, we want our Oscar bag of goodies. For all the participants, we, this is our Oscar bag. Everybody gets a gift from the Oscar bag, and it's it's really special. So it, it comes with it comes with it comes with a mouse and 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 and, and a thumb and a thumb drive. So and a remote and a remote. So we want to thank you all for everything, and and don't let the suspense kill you, Jason. But um, you know, I, I I'm kind of like a much as I reveal stuff on social media, I am really a closed book. I mean, the stuff you hear is just the minor stuff. But Diane made a comment the other day. She said, you know, um, I go through a, a lot of different things. Like, for instance, I got today, I was on suspense. I was on, I was on literal. Um, I did something in 2019 on Instagram, apparently. And, and even though it was every good intention, they decided to ding me on Instagram in 2022. They put me on a 30 day, you can't make any bonus for any of the videos you post, mm -hmm. which is bonuses is like pennies on a dollar, but it's still something. So they put me on suspension until the 27th, which was today. So I woke up and I saw it and it said, congratulations, you are, you can now monetize your account. And I was like, oh, this is great. All right, I hadn't even posted anything yet. I literally had not posted anything yet. And there was notes going, oh, your post could mean you could be suspended for 90 days. I'm like, wait, how am I getting a notification for something I posted? I haven't even posted yet. So it's like they ding me for something I didn't even do yet. And then a few seconds later, it says you can't, you can't, you can't, you've been, you can't do any more bonuses again for until April 26. No notification, no nothing, just that's it. Starting to get a little old. It's kind of weird. I'm like, you know what, whatever. No one knows why. I don't even know why. And they don't explain to you why. There's no, no explanation. Just can't do it. 
A couple of uh, comments here before you go. Random question, Stanley. I noticed your hat. So, Stanley, is it still spring training Arizona for baseball still? Yeah, there's still, but this is, look at the hat. Yeah, he's look closey. It says San Francisco Fire, Fire Department. Department. Because he definitely does not rep the San Francisco Giants. Nope. I do, though. She does. I also represent the Warriors, who are not doing so great right now. I really miss Steph Curry, but that's okay. Oh, what was the other question? Um, oh, uh, Gabriel says, I, know, he I want to hear you say linoleum. Say it correctly before you end. Go. Linoleum. One more time. Linoleum. It's not n. L. Linoleum? No, linoleum. That's stuff on the floor you walk on. All right. All right. And then uh, let's see. Is anything else? Uh, yes, Khalil. He is a Phillies fan. Um, yeah. Maxim says, I love the gong show Gene the Dancing Machine. She never seen that. That's a millennial part for you. Never know who that is. Ooh, don't is that the is that remember, the was that the, the game show that yeah, you showed me? Yeah, remember the Dow ninety eight show I told you about too? Yeah, yeah. You when you showed me at, at Home Depot, you take the it, cake. That's, that's like a that's, 70 show. That's Dow ninety eight. Yeah, that's like a, a seventy show. The show was different. Oh, okay. It had Mean Gene the Dance Machine. Yes, we you showed that to me here too. I think it was from the seventies, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was way back in the day. You know what show I liked back in the day? What? Well, back in the day is nineties for me. Um. Alf and Out of This World. And oh, I love I Dream of Jeannie too. Am I going to cut Dan off again? I never cut her off. Yeah, that tends to be a trend you're doing way too often. Look, it was an accident. It was not an accident. You did that to me like three times in a row. I accidentally cut you off three times in a row. No, you didn't. You, you like that. My finger accidentally hit the button and accidentally pushed the button. The unknown comic. Yeah, see, again. You're the unknown comic? No. What? That was that was Oh, that's another yeah, show? Yeah. On, oh. No. Yeah, it was on it was on the same show. Oh, okay. The yeah, unknown comic, he had a bag over his head. All right, B well, it is seven forty and I have to be in bed at eight something. Yeah, what's it say? And then came back with a muted mic that put on my fail calculation. Oh gosh. Of course, Gabriel was like saving stuff again. And but you know what though, you you have been You're we still have to sing out, Beam. I just, I just your, your finger is on the button to start the thing. You're going to My cut me off. My finger is on the thing to start the thing? Go. You're, okay. I'm a millennial. I'm a boomer. And we appreciate you guys taking time to be with us. Did you have anything else you want to tell us? You still... You still Good might. night! <laughs> Good night, everybody. We appreciate it. Bye. Thank you for listening to Millennial Boom with Diane Faith and Stanley Roberts. Millennial Boom and Reasons Why Aliens Will Never Invade Earth and Caught Misbehaving Videos are made possible through viewer donations. Check out www.linktree.com slash MrBadlyTV to see how you can help. See you next week.